March 4th, 2021, about a year after the emergency, the editor-in-chief of CBC News, Brody Fenlon, wrote on his blog, a recent survey found that about half of Canadians think journalists are purposely trying to mislead them. Well, that's because we're on to you. At least half of us pay attention to our gut, and we know that you are purposely trying to mislead us. But Mr. Fenlon said that CBC is going to correct this. To promote trust in journalism, the CBC has joined four organizations. I didn't know that they joined these organizations until I began to look into this a little bit. One of them is called the Trusted News Initiative, which is designed to filter news through its own trust filter system. Another one's called the Journalism Trust Initiative. It's basically the same name, but this one uh, does more or less the same thing. Another one's called the Trust Project, and then Project Origin. And notice that none of these organizations have the word truth in them. If you tell the truth consistently, trust is automatic. If you don't tell the truth consistently, you have to say things like, please trust me. So I'm just going to quickly outline what these things are, because they're all basically the same thing. The Trusted News Initiative and the CBC announced together on the 27th prior to the Adrian Arsenault piece, that CBC and Radio Canada are joining an industry collaboration of major media and technology organizations to rapidly identify and stop the spread of harmful coronavirus disinformation. I think the pandemic really started in China about four months prior to this, and four months prior to an unknown virus killing so many people, there is no disinformation. The scientists among our commissioners will tell you there is only information and all information is critical at the beginning, particularly at the beginning. So immediately they were in a position of pushing one side of the story. Stopping misinformation means censoring. Censorship, pure and simple. The Journalism Trust Initiative, a second organization that they joined, is run by an outfit called Reporters Sans Frontières, Reporters Without Borders. And when I was working as a correspondent in the Middle East, the Reporters Without Borders would uh, take the side of, say, a Syrian journalist who was writing something against the dictator Hafez al-Assad and maybe had been imprisoned and they were trying to bring attention of the world to this imprisoned journalist. That's the kind of excellent work this group did. In 2020, it shifted completely to start something called the Journalism Trust Initiative, starting an algorithmic indexing based on their criteria to improve your revenues, meaning if you, if you run your news organization through their filter, they'll make sure that it gets up to the top of the Google page so you'll get more clicks and more money will improve your revenue. There was an incentive there. Project Origin is another one that is uh, the, it's a collaboration between the CBC, the BBC, the New York Times, and Microsoft. And one of these organizations is not a news organization. It's a tech organization. One of the things they talk about here is that they, um, the technical provenance approach in conjunction with media education and synthetic media detection techniques to help establish a foundation of trust. Not truth, trust is what they're looking for. One of their uh, tools is called the power of the machine, harnessing AI to fight disinformation. So I can only uh, surmise from this that Microsoft is using AI to identify anybody speaking words that they want to identify as to be censored or called misinformation, label misinformation so you will agree with their censorship. The next one is called the Trust Project. Now this one is largely tech, Craigslist, Google, Facebook and Microsoft are involved. Again, helping tech support trustworthy news. Helping tech. What do we care about tech and, and, and truth and news? How are they together all of a sudden? We stand for integrity. They say, look for our eight trust indicators. We built the trust indicators. So they have listed, all they have to do is tell the truth. They don't need no eight trust indicators. And interestingly, Google, Facebook, and Bing all use the trust indicators in display and behind the scenes. So somehow they are censoring it before it gets to you. I'm going the wrong way. These are the members of the Trust Project. Now, this goes way beyond the CBC. Globe and Mail is also in there. CTV is a member. The Walrus magazine in Canada is supposed to be an independent thought magazine. They're part of this project, the Canadian press. So I put this up there to let you know that it is not just the CBC. The reason they all sound the same 
is because they're all part of this trust campaign. But the CBC is also part of something else. It's something uh, with just public broadcasters. It's called the Global Task Force for Public Media. Global Task Force exists to defend the values and interests of public media. Excellent. But it was formed to develop a consensus and a single strong voice among them. And that's the CBC, BBC News, ABC Australia, Korean Broadcasting, they joined recently, France Television, Radio New Zealand, ZDF from Germany, and SVT from Sweden. Now, I can't imagine having worked at the CBC for almost a decade and being told every day our job is to elevate the voices of Canadians on Canadian stories to unite our vast country and make us all feel as one. What single issue do we have with Korean broadcasting when that is our mandate? What issue does Radio New Zealand have with Swedish television when their mandate is the same to elevate their own people? This is a bizarre conglomerate of public broadcasters. And I would put forth to the panel that the public broadcasters are the ones that are not easily bought because the advertisers don't exist and therefore they have no influence. So something else was done here. Now, the public task force is headed by our CBC president, Catherine Tate. She is the current president. Three months ago, she gave a speech at Simon Fraser University. The first word out of her mouth was trust. Trust seems to be in short supply. The next phrase is disinformation, conspiracy theories, U2 rabbit hole. This is the trusted news initiative mantra. This is what she was talking about at Simon Fraser University. She goes around, makes speeches, and says, please trust us. So let's get to what they do, in addition to the first piece that I saw in The National that rubbed me the wrong way. I listened to a piece one day in my car by Matt Galloway, again, a national treasure. I love this guy. When I first heard him on CBC Toronto, I thought, oh my God, there's a future. He might be the next Zosky. And then he turned on us. He did a story on March 29th, 2021, where he interviewed a guy from something called the Center for Countering Digital Hate. And I thought this was going to be about anti-Semitism or something, digital hate. Instead, the guy said, people who are recommending vitamin C intravenous and hydrogen peroxide nebulization are hate. And I thought, well, how is recommending health treatments. I mean, vitamin C intravenous has been going on for 50 years. It's used in cancer treatment. It's used in all kinds of treatment. Uh, hydrogen peroxide nebulization is a simple uh, drugstore hydrogen peroxide 3% mixed with water and vaporized into a mass so you clean out your nasal passage and stop viral replication and it's common. You can buy them. So how are these things dangerous? How are they hateful? It was, was particularly interesting to me. But the expert guest went on to say that these people will kill and he said that the hydrogen peroxide nebul nebulizers, which are benign, are literally inhaling bleach. This is his words, literally inhaling bleach. It's actually not. It's actually literally a hydrogen peroxide nebulizer. It's literally nebulizing hydrogen peroxide. It's not literally inhaling bleach. Inhaling bleach is literally inhaling bleach. He lied. So why is he lying to Matt Galloway? Why is Matt Galloway letting him lie to me? on the radio, and I know it's a lie for a fact. The same guy from the Center for Countering Digital Hate, who also went on to say anti-vaccine misinformation is hate, which I believe diminishes the power of that word for all those who have experienced it. He went on Marketplace to say this, but then Marketplace took it to the next level. They became a censor. Marketplace reported 800 pieces of information to social media giants attempting to have them censored, claiming they were misinformation. And then they complained that the media giants only took down 12% of what CBC said was wrong on the internet. So my questions are, since when is the CBC deciding what misinformation on other media platforms is? What is it their business? They're the CBC, do your job, pay attention to yourself. Why are you going out correcting in your view, what's wrong with other media? How is the CBC or Marketplace or this reporter qualified to comb the internet for 800 posts and declare them to be false? We never found out in the piece. And who at the CBC is the arbiter of truth and misinformation on the behalf of us Canadians who like to decide for ourselves? 
So I wrote a letter to the head of journalistic standards at CBC, Paul Hamilton, who's, who has since left the position. I asked him to do three things for me, please. I told him who I was and that I'd worked there and I named some people that he would, we, we would know in common. And I said, please supply me with the policy at the CBC that describes the mandate to correct what you deem to be misinformation by other organizations. Please include the process by which information is deemed to be incorrect and therefore requires correction or censorship by the CBC. And I asked to please supply me with any other example outside of the COVID-19 story where CBC corrects what it deems to be misinformation on social media. Now he did reply to me, but he didn't answer any of those questions.